Good evening, my name is Katarzyna Nowicka and welcome to Poland Daily News. This weekend was full of electoral conventions where new promises and proposals were made. One of those proposals is for a debate of the incumbent Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki with the Civic Coalition Party's candidate for the head of government, Małgorzata kidawa Błońska. In an interview with Wsieci, the Prime Minister said he would ha first have to see the manifesto of his political opponents. We hear that Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki is looking for some loopholes to avoid this debate, taken into consideration consideration his show the manifesto statement, Mr. Morawiecki probably hasn't seen the book which has 136 pages and can be read at any time. If we take a look at the Law and Justice website, there is not a single manifesto in sight. In the statements of Mr. Morawiecki, we cannot hear this manifesto. We do not see any document with which they would go to the election. So you can see that this is a way of avoiding the real test, the debate. If the Law and Justice Party does not want to debate, this means they don't want to show their proposals to a wide group of Poles, the voters. They can have debates anywhere in Poland, but only an open debate in the national media can be received by all Polish citizens. Law and Justice is afraid because they have no manifesto. There is simply no specific proposal for the Poles. The Civic Platform Party does not seem to have much to say, but for voters such an exchange would be needed. This debate would certainly show that Prime Minister Morawiecki is a professional, that he knows the economy well, but for the other side of the debate this is not particularly visible. The Law and Justice Party's Chief Electoral Officer Joachim Brudziński answered yes to the question of a possible debate. He added that the Law and Justice Party does not intend to dance the melody prepared in the cave, which is how the office belonging to Grzegorz Skatina has been known in the same for years. Brzezinski finished by stating that Law and Justice would not support their political competitors in this way. As he pointed out, the party debated in Lublin last weekend and will debate in Łódź this weekend and that the voters are the ones for the party to debate with. These are the declarations or statements of the Law and Justice staff members at the moment when it comes to a possible pre-election debate. According to a survey conducted by Polstad for the Super Express newspaper, if the Polish parliamentary elections were held next Sunday, the Law and Justice Party would win with 45% of the votes. According to the survey, 45% of the voters would support the Law and Justice Party, while 28% would vote for the Civic Coalition formed of the Civic Platform Modern and Green Parties. The left wing, made up of the Democratic Left Alliance, the Spring and the Together Party, would be in third place with 14% of the votes. The Polish coalition, made up of the Polish People's Party and the Cookies 15 movement, would poll at 7%. Tomorrow, the Public Prosecutor's Office will file yet another act of indictment in the so-called reprivatization scandal, as informed by the Prosecutor General and Minister of Justice, Zbigniew Ziobro. This time, the act covers 13 people and is related to 13 pieces of real estate. According to the findings of the investigators, the officials at the Warsaw City Hall accepted millions of bribes from the reprivatization mafia. To date, the prosecutor's office has charged 52 people, including very prominent representatives of the legal and business world, as well as influential Warsaw officials. In total, these accusations cover 15 lawyers and legal legal advisors, as well as public notary and numerous public officials. As part of the proceedings, property collateral for 140 million zlotys and bribes totaling over 45 million zlotys were found. All of this happened, of course, under the noses of the previous ruling party, headed by Prime Minister Donald Tusk and Mrs. grunkiewicz waltz the then mayor of Warsaw. It was done in total passivity. We are talking about unspoken consent to human harm that happened every day. This is also one of the conclusions of these proceedings, not yet converted into a specific application, as no proper legal and criminal assessment has yet been made. These events were an ordeal and a drama for many families, residents of Warsaw, under the watchful eye of the highest officials ruling Poland at the time. The local government elections in Moscow have ended. According to data from almost all constituencies, candidates of the opposition groups have won at least 20 seats in the 45-member Moscow City Duma. According to Electoral Arithmetic, four seats will be taken by the candidates of the anti-Kremlin Yabloko Party.
According to the published data, the current deputies of the United Russia Party, who run in the elections as independent candidates, will fill the nine seats in the Moscow City Duma. The next three places will be taken by the current deputies of the My Moscow Coalition. About 12 seats will be taken by other independent candidates. The Communist Party of the Russian Federation won 13 seats in the Moscow City Duma. Three seats were won by representatives of the Socialist Just Russia Party and the Yabloka Party, which is the anti-Kremlin opposition. The next two places will be filled by independent candidates who are not associated with United Russia, among which one of the candidates is also supported by the Yabloka Party. Some of the candidates of the Communist Party of the Russian Federation were supported by the oppositionist Alexei Navalny, who encouraged them to vote for them, because as he claims, the party has the biggest chance of defeating United Russia. Thank you, that's all for tonight. Now on to Poland Daily Business with Aleksander Wierzejski and his guest. I'm Aleksandra Zarzycka and welcome to Poland Daily Weather. Let's take a look at the map of the night. Temperature will rise to 24 degrees in Rzeszów. In other regions, temperature will range from 16 to 20 degrees. Some rain will appear in most regions. Thunderstorms are expected over Białystok and Rzeszów. In the rest of the country, light overcast will appear. And now over to tomorrow. Very pleasant weather is expected on Tuesday. Temperature will fall to 15 degrees in Koszalin. In central, temperature will hover around 20 degrees. We are expecting alternating rain, sun and storm. The pressure will rise. Let's take a look at the forecast for the following three days. Wednesday will be a sunny day all over Poland. The higher temperature, 23 degrees, will appear on the east. On Thursday, temperature will increase to 25 degrees. It will be a sunny day. On Friday, pressure will drop, a maximum 25 degrees around Rzeszów and a minimum 18 degrees along the Baltic coast. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Poland Daily Business Edition. We are now at Krynica Zdruj Economic Forum, south of the country, and uh, we're talking to the business leaders, people who are visiting this event, including Marcin Gnyszka of Towarzystwo Biznesowe or Business Hello. Associations. Sir, welcome to the show. Uh, what are the what is the mood of the conversation on this forum? Uh, I think that I think that uh, the mood is very optimistic. Uh, we can see that uh, Polish economy is um, is buzzing, is blowing uh, in positive uh, sense. Uh, so I, I I think that the dominant mood is very uh, very positive. Um, uh, and what I what I've seen and uh, today I, I had a reflection that uh, I can. Uh, I, I know who is a um, businessman, who is a politician, and who is a journalist. Because journalists are talking about the meritoric um, side of, of panels. Yeah? Uh, when they drink coffee, they are talking about panels, the, the subjects, and, and so on. Businessmen are talking about people. I, I've met with this man, I've met with that man, and, and I plan to, ma to, to meet this one. And politicians, they are talking about politics. <laughs> so even in Krynica, they are talking about this, what they are talking about in Warsaw, and so on. But it, it's funny that apparently whole Warsaw moved here because yeah, yeah. is <laughs> meeting trends <laughs> since <laughs> their high school. Yeah, it's uh, re really significant that uh, in Krynica, uh, every year you can see people you don't have time to meet in Warsaw. And uh, in this uh, pavement you you see almost everyone from Warsaw. The stretch is about 300 meters long and yeah. <laughs> virtually all the members of government, mm -hmm. all the members of um, CEOs of the big companies, yeah. famous everyone journalists. Is here. Yes, that's <laughs> a cross. And w what is happening after such a meeting? I mean, <laughs> is there any trust between those people? Yeah, I think up? I think that it, uh, this is a very specific moment when you can um, when you can 
create a, a bonding bonding relations with people you know from internet from twitter with people you virtually know uh, and after that uh, you can w work on this re relation the very fundamental thing in networking is to make a follow-up uh, so for for me those months uh, after um, Krinica are, are months of follow-ups and uh, of meetings on um, coffee, of course in Ethno Cafe, uh, with people I've met, I, I've met here. You founded the Business Association, a conservative based on the Christian values um, organization that groups businesses from various yeah. uh, segments and across the uh, high, small one, big one, very big ones. How many of your uh, members are here in uh, I've Kinica? met I've met almost five people uh, here but uh, what is really uh, funny I can be uh, for many of them uh, representative here so for example, uh, yesterday I've chosen one of panels not because of my uh, aspirations uh, but to get no one person from the panel why because one of my members needs to uh, cooperate with this uh, company we know that you are <laughs> indis indispensable person yeah yes yeah. so how it is really, really amazing for me that i can also serve not only my interest but also uh, the interest of my my members mm -hmm. Uh, this is interesting uh, because uh, we see lots of people are coming here in order to get new contacts, in order to get new orders, perhaps, or yeah. new, associ new affiliations. Yeah, I think I, I, I think this a good aim uh, to have here, but of course you you, you have to uh, you, you, you have to know how to ne network. Uh, people who are uh, who think that networking is about selling uh, are wrong. Yeah? Uh, networking is about uh, establishing relationships, and uh, Krinza is really a good place to to establish, to start, but to make fruits of it, you have to spend some time. Thank you very much for this conversation. If you are looking for a uh, networking specialist, Marcin Gniszka is the one. Welcome. <laughs> and that was it for Poland Daily Business Tonight. I'm Aleksandra Zarzycka and welcome back to Poland Daily Weather. Let's take a look at the forecast for tomorrow. Very pleasant weather is expected on Tuesday. Temperature will fall to 15 degrees in Koszalin. In central, temperature will hover around 20 degrees. We are expecting alternating rain, sun and storm. The pressure will rise. And now let's see tomorrow's forecast for our continent. The highest temperature we will see in Bucharest, 31 degrees. Light overcast in British Islands and there we will see 20 degrees in London. In Central Europe, a lot of sunlight will appear and from time to time we will see thunderstorms and rays. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Good day everyone, my name is Maria Kondzielska and this is Poland Daily Culture. Today in studio we have a very original band. He is Polish and she is Chinese and they make music together. Ladies and gentlemen, Pomponika. Hello. Hello. Wucja and Piotr, thank you for coming. Thank you for invitation. But before we listen to their story, let's hear them play. Push, push me, that's the way you care.
it, China is a huge place with, I guess, a lot of competition in every field and also in music. How did you start your music career out there? So back when I was a child, I, w I was always want to play in piano, but we are kind of financially poor, so we cannot support it. So I have to wait until I was 15. Then we got a chance and they said, OK, we can support you. You can learn piano or whatever you want. So I started to learn the piano and some vocal things. Then after three or four years training, and I entered the music university. But after the bachelor studying, I feel also the vocal is not really for me. I want to do more funny, crazier things. And I changed my major to the composition. So I learned the theory of composition and some basic thing of, about doing the composition. And then that's how we found the chance. The Peter's workshop is happening here for the compilers. Then that's how I came to Poland. And how, what your parents say about your dear child becoming a musician? I guess it's, it's always a hard decision. I think they try to understand me, but could be difficult because they are both doctors, the surgeries. So it's totally different words. But my father was always trying, he said, no matter what you're going to do, we support you. And he want to be my, the biggest psycho fan. So no matter where we have the concert in China back then, he just came and yelled the loudest. So it's good to support. <laughs> Absolutely. And what is your approach also? You, you had this element of you're Polish, but you've seen music in China, in Chinese music, in Bandarin. What was your observations? How, how different it is? What was your first thing which just kicked you and you realized, oh, they are doing it totally different or they are doing it the same? I think what distinguished Chinese music and the Chinese music culture is uh, the use of pentatonic. Which is? Which is the five notes from the scale. Also, we, we also use pentatonic a lot. We, we use pentatonic playing blues, playing jazz. Mm, but the Chinese people use the scale a lot. And they have even different names for uh, different figurations of the scale. Uh, so it's very interesting. Uh, I wish to learn how they think about it. And uh, when we're doing our music, we use pentatonic also like a lot. So you combine, you're inspired by Chinese culture as well. So in Chinese language, at least in Man Mandarin, mm -hmm. there are tones, yes? Yes. Different. So I understand you have this ability to be musically developed uh, fr just from the language, which comes from the language. Is it like this, truly, that you have to have a bigger scale of your voice to say a little bit, to say in China? What is the most difficult word in China you you, come, you, come, you came across or you have in mind right now? So for me, personally... Or just all together, do you have any... Very difficult words? Yes. For me, that's the... Uh, Taxi driver is the most difficult for me because I talk in a very lazy way. So it's chu zu che si ji. Does it sound like Polish? Chu zu che si ji. Chu zu sa si ji. Something like that, okay, yes. I completely destroyed it. And the tune is funny, actually. Also, the tune will kind of influence our music, I would say, especially in the pop music now. Because if you are talking like the minority region, they have their own language, which the tune might not be a problem. But in the Mandarin speaking the songs, like the pop songs, because the tune, some is going there, some is going there. So if you're choosing different uh, the tune of the music and for the different words, you have to choose very carefully or otherwise it could sound very ridiculous. That's what I've heard, that you actually can say the same words, but with a different tune and people wouldn't be understand different you. Meaning. And yes. it could be different meaning. Yes. Do you recommend for people in Poland to learn Man Mandarin at least? I mean, it's always nice to learn another language, yes, if you want to communicate. And also, if you are learning the alien language, you will also find your favorite part of it. There are some different things you might like in a different language, so why not just try it? Yeah, I can show off to you that in a week I'm starting my Mandarin mm -hmm. course in Singapore, so wish me luck. So far I can say Tuni Kao Hao as Bon Appetit. Bon Appetit, ah. But I'm not sure if it's right. Because I think we usually don't say that in a formal way. Oh, I understand, that's <laughs> what they taught me at least. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Tai Chien. Tai yeah, Chien. <laughs> and so far, Wo Aini. Koham Tesh. To our Polish audience, we tell you 
Mandarin might be a wonderful travel and wish me luck personally as well and of course to our band Pomponika. Thank you for watching Poland Daily Culture. This is the story of a remarkable woman. Maria Zawera Wąsowska, Negroholska, was born into a very different Poland. She comes from an old Polish noble family with long patriotic traditions. As a young girl, at the outbreak of the Second World War, she saw first Russian and then German troops in her family home. Arrested with her family and held in prison by the Gestapo, she later joined the Polish underground and fought under her uncle Remy Grish Grocholsky. In 1944, she participated in the Warsaw Uprising, fighting in the Makotov district. In this program, we hear, in her own words, the remarkable story of her life during those dark days, culminating with her heroism during the Warsaw Uprising, for which she was awarded one of Poland's highest military medals. After um, after two weeks, uh, we have been transported uh, to Lublin, to the castle where it was the big prison. Okay. That was the first time I was I uh, saw my mother, because they put my mother in this uh, truck, and me together. So it was the first time after our uh, arrest. And in Lublin, we have been placing in two different cells. My cell was full of people, people, the women, women only. My mother, she was in another place. Uh, here, that was uh, June, June 41. Right. Uh, once we have been placed in a, in a big uh, hall with gas or with water. So we received rather water. That was fantastic because if not, it was the end yes. of everybody. That must have been very frightening. That was, that was uh, yes. But you know, each time that I was like frightened, I was praying. Yes, because I've often wondered when I've met people like you, mm -hmm. when they tell these stories, yeah. these remarkable stories, where the inner courage comes from to face these, to me, unimaginable difficulties. From there? From there, yes. Well, a lot Absolutely. Of yes. And so for that, I, I was quiet, right? <laughs> because I knew that somebody's uh, taking care of me. That's good. That's remarkable. And, and how long were you in, in, in prison in Lublin? In Lublin uh, to the end of uh, August. This is 1941. Right, right. Yes. So when you left prison in Lublin, where did you go next? Uh, oh, about the uh, finish of my stay, it was very strange because a Wachmeister came with his gun, and he uh, placed me out of the prison in an um, apartment uh, in the city. That was, I don't know how it was arranged, but it was very um, strange that I had a company of a soldier who put me over there. And from there I took it, the train and I landed uh, very close to my um, uh, hometown, but they left me in my uncle's, uh, my grandfather's uh, place, 
who was uh, already in prison. Right. From there, I was, I didn't want to stay over there. And uh, with an aunt, I, I was going to Warsaw. Okay. And with her husband, he was the husband. We left him in the forest, you know. Um, with his family, we have some pictures here for sure. Uh, in Warsaw, I stayed until the 44. And I was introduced by him in the underground army. Uh, so uh, sometimes we have been going with a, a note. Uh, oh yeah. Some notice, some news to a place in Warsaw. I, I have been in contact with my uncle and with somebody with his in contact. You know that's end. Yes. Uh, oh, I'm I what between all these months because that was March and here August already. Uh, I made my high school uh, exams. And then finally, suddenly we knew that at five o'clock we will be starting to fight the Germans from underground, you know. This, For, was, on, this was on the 1st of August, 1944. Right. But before, one of the things which has struck me from my, my, my reading of, of this subject is how in different parts of Warsaw, Life was very different from other parts of Warsaw, which seems quite strange that in one relatively small city, the experience of people under the German occupation could be so different. Everybody was, I don't know, uh, we have been living like normally, going to school, not to school, school was, it, it was not existing for, uh, education that was out, it was not forbid uh, forbidden. Yes, it was forbidden. Um, so we have been going each day to one place, next day to another place. The apartments of people who were taking care of us. It was fantastically arranged. I think that, uh, that's another thing which strikes me, because I've heard this from other people as well, that, that despite the chaos and the confusion of war and occupation, still some it was attempt was made at normal life and education of the children. That's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So we have been very proud to be in that, you know, to uh, and the last exam, the high school exam, we have been uh, in the building where was my school, normal school, and here it, we, we have been making the high school uh, exam, and here we had the Germans just by the wall. And I remember that the, um, the director of uh, a woman of our school, I was, I was writing, because I was uh, writing each day something, you know, but that it was something special uh, with the title of uh, uh, Clarity and uh, and um, Chemnus. Darkness. Yeah, Dark darkness, yes. Darkness. Light and uh, Light something and dark, like yes. that. And the director of the school that she was very we have been scared of her. And she was crying because she was reading my uh, my exam, my work. And that, for me, it was something because she was very uh, austere. Uh, and suddenly here I heard by somebody who was over there that she was crying. Your writing had moved her. Well, uh, pretty soon after that came the day uh, at five o'clock in the afternoon to start the uprising.
Hello and welcome. It's time for another series of episodes in Poland Daily Travel. What's better to do on a bright, sunny summer's day than light out for the country? And that's just what we did. There are so many interesting and cool places near Warsaw to go and see. That makes a day trip full of adventure and surprises. We went west, first to Ozharov Mazowiecki, then cross country. Nearby Sochachev was the scene of the Battle of Bzura, Bzura River in September 1939. The last Polish cavalry charge defeated German infantry. There's a museum and the ruins of the castle of the Dukes of Mazovia. Another cross country jaunt and we come to Brohov on the Bzura River. There's a beautiful church with the design of a castle. Chopin's parents married here at the turn of the 19th century. So it's Westward Ho from Warsaw for Poland Daily Travel. Stay with us and sit back and enjoy the ride. Poland Daily Travel, your favorite travel programming about Poland. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition, another episode of Poland Daily Travel. And this is a special one because, as you remember from the last episode, we were at the church in Brohov, St. John's Church. And uh, we were saying that that was the place where Chopin's parents were married. But in 1939, a century and almost a century and a half later, there was a very important battle here. We said we were going to look for the battlefield, and we managed to use our little book and the map on the back of it and a little intuition. And in fact, the church is there, and the battlefield is right here. A substantial part of that cavalry, cavalry battle took place on this open field. The river, as we understand, is about a kilometer away from us to this direction. And on this flat field, the Polish cavalry uh, was covering the retreat of the Polish army back to Warsaw in this direction. So the church is over here. And beyond that, about 50 kilometers away uh, would be outskirts of Warsaw, say Jolibourg. And behind us is where the Polish cavalry charged. If you can try to imagine uh, perhaps you've seen some of the movies with the Polish cavalry. I know, I know that you have, and I have. And try to imagine, what do you think it would have been like, Nicholas? Well, fortunately, I've never been in battle, but I imagine it would have been pretty desperate. I mean, a, you know, the war had only been going a short time. We we're a fortnight into the war, um, and already the, the German forces are very close, to, very close to Warsaw, having charged across the border. I mean, the geography of Poland, this particular part of Poland, does allow for quick troop action because there are very few natural obstacles, which is, of course, historically... Apart from rivers. Yes, yeah, which is, of course, historically one of the reasons that there have been so many battles in this part of the world, because you can move vast amounts of troops and, and artillery um, in the modern era very, very quickly. But I imagine it would be very, like all battles, very frightening. People are within sight of the capital of the country. I mean, almost in sight, within a very short distance. I mean, it, it, within a bicycle ride, in fact. Yeah, within a bicycle uh, ride. Within a bicycle yeah. ride. And here are this, this massive, this massive force of, 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 of the Germans, the air, air cover as well. Uh, so it must have been quite frightening. But I suppose that the immediate after the battle, the, the, the tremendous relief that on this particular occasion, the, the Polish forces had been able to defeat uh, the German attackers. Yeah. It and takes your breath away when you, if you try to think about what it would have been like to use that cavalry charge a significant amount of cavalry of the Poznan and Pomorza army. So they had been pushed, presumably, back from that area. Exactly. And were falling back, falling back. To try and defend the capital. Into the center of Poland, yeah, to, to defend the capital, yeah. And I think like, one of the things that must be been a feature was because the mm. Luftwaffe had, obviously, air superiority. No, of course, and they were, they were trying to get to the forest because fighting a, this rear guard action to get to the forest because, of course, in that dense forest, you would be able to hide a large yeah. amount of, of, of troops, uh, indeed. especially if you knew the way through, as they did. Though they would have yeah. done, yes. The Germans would yeah. have been less familiar. Well, no, they, they had no wouldn't idea have at all. At all. They, yes. uh, and the, they would have had to depend on, you know, commandeered locals or perhaps a well, German Well, of course, I think it's fair to say at this point, because the, the Poles did not really co collaborate in any sense. Well, this was the it? beginning of the war. Well, yeah. It was the beginning of the war, and even, even under the extreme yeah. pressure 
of the the uh, the war as it progressed and the terrible horror still i think poland is remarkable I was, I was suggesting they might have grabbed somebody at a gunpoint said show us the way right, to the yes. forest rather um, than a and, and they will probably, yeah, yeah. yes well, well they, yeah. they may well have done well that's the normal thing you would do but uh at, at, at any rate the germans would have been uh, at a great loss facing that dense forest into which the polish army uh, a substantial part of it was the infantry disappearing because you could march through the forest. Oh, yeah, if uh, you knew where you were going. No, of course. So on this battlefield, what we're talking about is that on this battlefield, you had a massed Polish cavalry battle against German infantry in 1939, uh, well after the time of mechanized warfare. And it's quite extraordinary to think of the heroism of, of those people, you know. Uh, it's... Uh, you know, and standing on this sort of field, it reminds me also uh, almost of the Little Bighorn or something like that, you know, a countryside field. We can hear the birds and okay. and it's very still here. We're the only noise we are. Uh, on this field right now is us it, talking. It is very still. And the, and the birds singing, yeah. And quite atmospheric with the darkening sky. Yeah. Well... More from Poland Daily. We're going to walk around a little bit more and uh, walk back towards the church, I think. But uh, I think that Nicholas and I will just disappear off the camera and let you just look at the battlefield for a little bit, for a few seconds anyway. Well, I don't know about you, Nicholas, but I've found this particular series of episodes really fun. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, the uh, things we found by chance, which although we had a general, or you had a general idea, it's the little details which you pick up only because you're actually here walking you, around looking. Yes, and you can't read those details. No. You can't really prepare for the experience that you're going to have because you interact with people. Exactly. You're going to also interact with the place. Exactly. And then we interact. We're having a conversation. conversation. Exactly. And, it, you know, isn't that the best kind of travel? That is the best kind of travel, yeah. yes. You, 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 so we always have a good time we when do. we do it. Yeah. Yeah, these unexpected yeah. discoveries. You form a different... <laughs> you, even if you have an idea, you, when you're here in the place, you, you, you have a different impression. Yeah, I found this very moving, standing on the battlefield. But also not really knowing if it was there, uh, having, getting some information and just picking up bits and exactly. pieces and then finding out that actually it, it is there. It, it, and then we walk up there and there's actually a cross mark, marking, marking, marking the battle. Marking we the, weren't sure at all. No, no, we because this, this map has, the battle is, you know, it shows mostly the Vistula River and exactly. it shows exactly. it was quite a big area between uh, there and Warsaw. And of course the significance being it's actually very close to Warsaw by yeah. this stage. And that, well, you know, that's relatively close. And then only a fortnight into the, into the war already, great progress from the German point of view, but great progress yeah. towards the capital had been made. Yeah. So it's a very quick battle. And of course, I think for those taking part, that must have been also part of the shock, how quickly everything happened. Um, well, it's particularly for the Germans, because imagine their surprise when these Polish cavalry are swooping down on them. And they are not prepared for this at well, all. Well, I think in, in turn, I think until the modern era, magnificent. If moment. you're standing on the ground, a yeah. horse charging towards you is pretty frightening. Must have been terrifying. Yeah. Because unless you're prepared and you have the, you've dug in your stakes or something, you don't have a, as a man on the ground, unless oh, you yeah. can shoot the horse, much defence by the time it gets to you. Particularly if there's a man wielding a large lance yeah. aimed at your vitals. That can't have been at all pleasurable no, I, for I, either. I never like a large lance aimed at my vitals. Well, the top tip... That makes don't, me nervous. Don't, don't be around in, in the sort of 1939 facing Polish cavalry when you do your time travel. No, I'm not. Poland Daily <laughs> time travel. I think I'm going to do Poland Daily time travel? Exactly. Just, I hadn't you, thought about that. No, no, well, you just, yeah. but we are travelling in time to a certain extent. We're here this, next to this very old church. Well, now there's example. the church again, yeah. Um, a battlefield. There's a structure 900 years old. Yeah. And, uh, you know, 
Although I feel 900 years old sometimes. Well, you look sometimes 900 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel 900 years old. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know. That's, it's that time traveling. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's I wearing you out. Yeah. I, mean, I think, mm -hmm. I think here, it, it is, you can't, there's no substitute for actually getting out That's and the point. seeing this yeah. stuff and, and yeah. soaking up the atmosphere as well. Because it's hard to convey atmosphere through the written word or whatever. You've got to really be there and feel it. I think that's true, yeah. Um, I mean, it is for me. And uh, I think it really changes your, the way you look at things, wherever you're traveling. Exactly. That really plunging into it. And it's important to go and do it. Uh, you can do it, go to places and meet guides and things like that, but you really need to put a lot of yourself into exactly. it. And you can read a bit and you can study up a bit. But nothing compares. But I think to, the other important thing you know, is you don't out. have to travel a great distance geographically to actually travel in your mind and travel to new experiences and That's find something new. That's the point. Yeah. And today, uh, we haven't traveled a long way, but I feel like it's been a really s significant series of stops exactly. from from Ozharov when we started. We started with the the Warsaw, the signing of the the paper to end the, the Warsaw, Warsaw uprising. uprising. And we came here uh, to a battlefield uh, where the whole a famous battle. Whole, I mean, if you think yeah. the Warsaw Uprising was the end of the battle for Poland at that time. Yeah. And here, here we was the a, beginning. Here was the beginning. And and success. Both were successful in their own way. way yes. For a short time. Exactly. Uh, but uh, you can't fight the world by yourself. No, that's the problem. Poland found that out, and so did the Germans in a different way, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. At any rate, this church has seen a lot. Indeed. As they say, if those walls could, could talk. If those walls could talk, <laughs> yes. They'd, be, they'd have one or two things to say. They'd have a story. Yeah. They do have a story even. A story in stone, or in this case, a story in brick. Yeah. Well. No, it's been a very interesting series of stops and learning about things. All places that folk can visit themselves. And not, as you said, not too far away from Warsaw. Traveling in, traveling in, in space, traveling from place to place, and uh, we've also been traveling in time today. Yeah. yeah.